Hey kindergarten, it's Mr. C here once again with another quick lesson for you today. This is going to be a relatively easy one. I have two friends here with me. Who is this guy? Mr. Q. And who is this lovely lady? Miss U. Mr. Q is And his quiet sound begins with qua, qua. Miss U has an upsidaisy umbrella, and her sound for her upsidaisy umbrella, upsidaisy umbrella begins with ah, uh, ah. Uh. So when you marry the two sounds together, when you bring them together, they go. Qua. Miss U actually helps you figure out Mr. Q's quiet sound. Qua. Qua. All right. Um, Mr. Q would like me to tell you about being quiet. We probably don't have a lot of that at home, so mom and dad might enjoy this lesson because this is all about places where you should be quiet. Okay, so let's share. Mr. Q's story with you today about places to be quiet. Quiet Mr. Q. All right, so what are some things that you see in this picture? Classroom, movie theater, a hospital, a library and a baby's bedroom while they're sleeping. Why do you think Mr. Q likes these pictures? Well, they are all quiet places. We're going to talk today about how important it is to be quiet in certain places, in certain circumstances. So let's look at the first picture in the classroom. How should people act while the teacher is speaking or reading to them? Listen quietly. Why should they be quiet? Ah, yep. So that they can hear what the teacher is saying, right? You want to be fair to your classmates because sometimes even if you don't want to listen, it doesn't mean that the people around you don't want to listen. So you've got to be quiet all the time so that everybody can hear the teacher. Why should people be quiet in a movie theater? Mm -hmm. So everyone can hear and see what is happening on the screen, right? Or on the stage. People pay lots of money to go into a movie and they want to be able to hear what's being said in the movie. If you can't hear what's being said in the movie, you're not going to know what the movie's about. And it can make people angry sometimes. Because, you know, again, they've spent lots of money on the ticket and on their popcorn and drinks and... They just want to sit and relax. So if you're talking during the movie, then they're not, they're not able to enjoy it. We have to think about other people sometimes, not just what we want to do. Okay. Let's look at the third picture of the hospital. Why should people be quiet in a hospital? Right. Because sick people need it to be quiet so that they can rest. When you're sick, you're not feeling so great. We need a restful, quiet, peaceful place to be when we're in a hospital. So... When you're visiting somebody in a hospital, you should always be quiet because not only the person that you're seeing isn't feeling well, but other people in other rooms, they really need their rest. That's how we get healthy when we're sick. So letting them rest is a good thing. Okay, let's go down to picture number four. What do you think, Mr. Q? Right, in the library. How should people act while they're in a library? Quiet. Should we be having conversations with other people in the library? Nope. When we go to a library, it's to find a book, sit down and read, not to run around and scream and play chase. It's a quiet place. Some people are studying, which means that they're trying to learn. And they can't do that if they've got kids running around and screaming, right? So when you're in a library, you should always be quiet. Okay. Let's look at the last picture of the sleeping baby. Why should people be quiet while someone is sleeping? Whether it's a baby or your dad or mom or brother or sister or grandma, grandpa, anybody. If you see somebody sleeping, 
Why should you be quiet? Right, so you don't want to wake him up. You don't want to wake him up. Well, you don't want to wake him up. Because especially I know if I get woken up while I'm sleeping, it makes me super crabby. And you don't want to see crabby Mr. C, do you? Nope. So, when else is it important to be quiet? What are some other places where you could be quiet? You know? Maybe in the car while mom and dad are driving, or if the family's watching television. Um, if mom and dad are at the table trying to get work done, maybe mom and dad go to school too. They're trying to get another degree, and they need their quiet, peaceful time. Hmm? Everybody at night, when it's time to settle down. Mr. Q may be quiet, but that doesn't mean he doesn't want to do things with us. Let's listen to some of the things that quiet Q can do with us. Okay. Here's Mr. Q and Miss U. Here's some of the things that Mr. Q can do with us. I'm going to read you a rhyme. See if you can pick out some of those rhyming words. Quiet Q cannot talk, but we can take him for a walk. Quiet Q has nothing to say, but we can show him games to play. Quiet Q cannot speak, but he can exercise. He's not too weak. Quiet Q cannot make a sound. It's our job to show him around. You guys hear any of those rhyming words? Talk, walk. Do those rhyme? Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Say, play. Are those rhyming words? Say, play. Those are. I'm going to give you a thumbs up for rhyming words on those. <coughs> Speak weak. Rhyming words? Yes or no? Speak weak. Yep, they're rhyming words. Sound around. Are those rhyming words? No or yes? Yep, sound around. Those make rhyming words. They make the ound sound. Hey, even that round, even that rhymed. All right. One last thing we're going to do today. We're going to trace Mr. Q. So put your finger in the air, and I want you to trace his capital Q. It goes all the way around like an O, but then you're going to put a line through the bottom corner. That's not a corner, really. The bottom part of his curve, I should say. So again, let's put our finger up in the air. We're going to trace his capital Q around like an O, and then to the bottom part of his curve, we're just going to put a little line. On his lowercase q, we're going to make a curve and a backwards hook, like a backwards j. So a curve and a line down that hooks. Okay, let's do Miss U while we're here. Put your finger in the air. We're going to make a U. So we're going to start up here. We're going to go down and curve back up. Down and curve back up. For her lowercase u, we're going to do almost the exact same thing. We're going to curve down and back up, but I want you to make a straight line back down. That's the difference between the capital U, no line, and the lowercase u. Curve up with a line down the right side. Okie doke. I think that's enough for today. I'm going to say my goodbyes. Um, I hope you guys have a good week, and I will be back later with other videos. Check out, I think we've done now about seven or eight videos. We've got stories with the letter people. They've read us Love, uh, Love Monster, and we've read Meet Me at the Market, and we've read The Big Bad Mood, and we read A Dozen Delicious Donuts and Lovely Lemon Lollies <gasps> and Vanishing Vests. And what am I missing? Um, uh, duck and Goose. Goose needs a hug. So there's lots of stories that we've read together. I hope this kind of takes you guys through the week. Have a great one, and I will talk to all of you again soon. Bye-bye.